I'm Mike Mossberg and I'm from the 930 service and God bless you all this morning. Um, I've had a long journey and, and God's kind of picked me up and, and took me in, and by the hand and led me to where he wanted me to go. I wound up going to prison with a 15 year sentence because of my drug and alcohol use. Then once I got to prison, I knew I wasn't going to get out of there for any other reason. So I started reading the Bible and I started praying because there's not much in there you can do by yourself. So there was one night that in particular that I remember that when I prayed, I prayed to God if he would help me this time, I would not do it again. And usually at that time, somebody else come, something else comes in my mind and says, oh, go ahead, we'll get out of this. But this, that night was different. Nothing come in my mind and told me anything. It, it was just silent. And I went on to fell asleep that night, and I woke up the next morning. Um, a couple weeks, three, four weeks went by, and the next thing I knew, I got a hearing in front of the judge to come see him. And I didn't know what this was for. Um, so I went in front of the judge, and he decided that he was going to send me to a treatment program. You know, that right there is a blessing in itself. So once I did that, I went and um, started going to school while I was there become a counselor. I didn't know what else to do, but I figured, well, I've been to treatment six or seven times. I'd know that in the counseling field, I'd know a little something about it, so I figured that would be it. And um, I figured that would be the same, the very thing that I need to change my life. And at this time, I didn't know, but but I just went on with it. I was just doing what God was telling me to do. So at this point, I went through, and I graduated, and I started my residency at the Gardenzia program in Baltimore, um, working with the same kind of people I was I was um, and where I came from and um, once I did that they asked me if I wanted to come to work for them that was another blessing God had given me so I've been working for them for about five or six years still clean and sober today been clean and sober now for 13 and a half years I've been I think about it every day however God gives me the tools to to use to so that I don't use no more or drink um, it's hard when you get into football games because you know how he used to like drink a beer and, and I can't do that either anymore. Um, you know, right now I can say that I can't, but um, I know I can't. So um, I, I need to keep with God's word and, and continue on. And um, this, I'm, just, I'm just glad he's seen something in me worth salvaging. And um, I have less time to be living in this life than I have lived. And I'm going to enjoy it this time. I'm going to enjoy every minute he's given me. He's blessed me with so much, I just can't count him. Thank you very much, and, and have a wonderful day. Mike is here today. Stand up. <laughs> Mike Mossberg is one of my closest Brook Hill friends. He can turn up on my doorstep any hour of the day or night. Most of you... Unless it's an emergency, you wait till a good hour. It's bad enough being on the emergency phone <laughs> service for the pastor for the weekend. But uh, Mike Mossberg has been part of Brook Hills Team Nicaragua for the past four years. And each of those years, he has shared his story at Hinatepe Jail with the inmates there. He has shared the good news of Jesus with them and he's been an integral part of our team. Thank you, Mike, for sharing your story. Thank God for what he is doing in you and continuing to do through you. It's great to be, great to be your friend. This morning's subject is breaking free from addictions. Some of you will immediately say, well, I'm not an addict, so this sermon is not for me. Wrong. Because some of us struggle with compulsive behaviors. Some of us think that enabling others is a virtue. Some of us need help with anger management. In a recent poll, 70% of Christian men and 30% of Christian women said that they struggle with Internet pornography. I'm coming to a conclusion, and that is that almost everyone has some kind of dysfunctional issue. And the truth is that if you think you don't, you're one of the most likely suspects for that. Amen. And so, uh, how many of you here would turn to your neighbor and say, I might have issues? You can do that. <laughs> yes, 
Thank you. So we're starting at a good place. This morning I'd like to think about addiction under four headings. And you can follow along on the sermon notes there in your bulletin. The four headings, an image, an action, a person, and a process. Say them with me. An image, an action, a person, and a process. Here we go. Heading number one, an image. And that image is the image of God within us. We all know that when God created the world, He said, let us make human beings in our image after our likeness. And He created people, both male and female, in His image. We are made in the image of God, and none of us fully understands what that means. But we do know some of the things that it means. It means that we are cherished by God. It means that we are loved beyond our capacity to understand by the God who created us. It means that God has a wallet with our picture in it. It's a very big wallet. And it means that we are created for a deep we are created with a deep longing for God. And addictions when we think of them are connected to this God image within us. We're reaching out for something that only God can satisfy. We hunger for something more. And that hunger is there because we have been created in God's image. One of the great writers, Christian writers of the 20th century, was a man named A.W. Tozer. Here's a quote. It's a good one. He says, The yearning to know what cannot be known, to comprehend the incomprehensible, to touch and taste the unapproachable, arises from the image of God in the nature of man. He says, Deep calls unto deep. The soul senses its origin and longs to return to its source. Good quote. So number one, there is a connection between addictions and the image of God in which we were created. One point already. That was easy. Heading number two, an action. That action was an act of disobedience to God. The Bible says that Adam and Eve disobeyed God in the Garden of Eden. They sinned. They knew what the command of God was, but they made a deliberate choice to disobey. And the consequences have been far-reaching and terrible. God's image within us has become fractured and scarred because of that action of our first parents. We still have something of, our, of, a rela- of, of his image within us, but that relationship has been broken. We have been damaged by the effects of sin. God's original creation has become corrupted, and hum- humanity has become disoriented, dislocated. The world in general has become alienated from God. And death has come into the world because of Adam and Eve's sin. When I walk and see roadkill, this is gross, but it reminds me of the fall of man. It reminds me that, sin ent- or that death entered the world as a result of human sin. Almost everything that we know about has become flawed and skewed because of humanity's waywardness and disobedience. And addictions are the result of an alienation from our Creator, whether it's alcoholism, drug addiction, compulsive eating disorders, gambling addiction, computer and cell phone related addictions, sexual addictions and perversions. All of these flow from human sin and from the resulting damage to our spirits and our souls and our bodies, the results of sin, the consequences of sin. The Bible says in 2 Peter 2.19, and this is something we will be referring to, listen, let's say it together. It says, you are a slave to whatever controls you. Let's say that. You are a slave to whatever controls you. 
Listen to Dictionary.com's definition of addiction. It is the state of being enslaved to a habit or practice that is psychologically or physically habit-forming to such an extent that its cessation causes severe trauma. And Dictionary.com defines compulsion as a strong, usually irresistible impulse to perform an act, especially one that is irrational or contrary to one's will. The Bible has a lot to say about bondage to things. Addiction is a certain kind of bondage. Compulsions are a certain kind of slavery. The Bible says, remember, you are a slave to whatever controls you. Let's say it again. You are a slave to whatever controls you. So what controls you? What has mastered you? Are you a glutton like me? Gluttony is a sin, and I have been guilty of that sin. 74% of American men are overweight or obese. Probably most of us at some point have been guilty of that sin. I have a history of late night binging, and I know what it is to feel out of control with my eating. Or perhaps you are an alcoholic or a problem drinker or a drug addict. Theoretically, in a church the size of Brook Hill, there would be 50 to 100 people who would be caught up in one of these addictions or conditions. Or are you distracted throughout the day by a smartphone that signals every new status update or tweet? Do you spend several hours a day on YouTube or Facebook? Are you a compulsive gambler out of control with that? Or a compulsive liar? Or perhaps there are pornographic images in your mind that you can't escape. When we get trapped in any kind of compulsive behavior, we can think of it as a kind of bondage or slavery. We feel unable to control ourselves. The Bible says you are a slave to whatever controls you. It would do us well, all of us, to reflect long and hard on the consequences of sin, not just Adam and Eve's sin, but now our own sin on our own lives. I was alive a long time, I think, before I began to really understand what corruption was within me. The thoughts that could lead to adultery or murder or who knows what else. The more that we have a sense and an understanding of our own brokenness, our own fallenness, our own issues then the greater is the glory of God and the greater is the love of God in our mind because we see what he has rescued and redeemed us from. We need to reflect long and hard about it. If you don't have questions, perhaps you're not thinking deeply enough. Heading number three, a person. What was number one? An image. Number two, in action, number three, a person. And that person is Jesus Christ. Through Jesus, God has provided a way out of our prison. The good news is that we can be released from the bondage of addictions and compulsions. The good news is Jesus himself, God's only begotten Son, has become our sin bearer. He has become our bondage breaker. He redeems us and releases us from a treadmill of destructive behavior. So you can say amen. Amen. That was a pretty, pretty bad when you have to make your own request for the amen. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'll try not to do that again. Welcome to my world. <laughs> 
And Jesus reveals to us the true nature of our Father God. If you want to know what God is like, the character of God, the nature of God, look at Jesus. Think about Jesus. Remind yourself of his words and his actions. Jesus is God in the flesh. That is the character of God. That is what God is like. He's revealed himself to us in his Son, Jesus Christ. When Jesus died on the cross, God laid all of the sins of the world on his shoulders. All of the disobedience, all of the scars of sin, all of the addictions and compulsions were laid on him. And in some way that we don't fully understand, he suffered in our place for our brokenness. And then the Bible tells us that he rose again on the third day, and in his rising, he triumphed over sin. In his rising, he triumphed over bondage. In his rising, he triumphed over shame. And this is the good news of Jesus. It's good news for the good person who can't quite make it to perfect. And it's good news for the worst person in the world, whoever you can think of that fits into that category. It's good news for the saint. It's good news for the serial killer. It's good news for the Democrats and the Republicans. And it's good news for us. Amen. (laughs) It's good news for you and me, struggling and suffering with addictions and compulsions or issues or whatever you want to call it. That thing that you're struggling with, it's good news for you with regard to that matter. Jesus said, the thief comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. I don't think there's a day that the enemy says, okay, I think I'll let Gary have a good day today. No, he's, he, ha- he has a plan. He has a motivation. And the motivation is, Jesus says, to, to steal and to kill and to destroy. But what did Jesus say? I have come that you might have life, 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 and have it more abundantly. Have life to the full. So I urge you today, I urge you today, even if you've done it before, to look to Jesus, to turn to Jesus as your sin bearer, to trust in Jesus Christ, the one who breaks your bondage, the one who sets you free. I appeal to you today, get past, get past the religiosity, get past the churchianity, get past the facade of things, and dig down deep into your relationship with Jesus Christ. If you're, really, if you're really serious about that compulsion, if you're really serious about that challenging thing that you cannot get victory over in your life, that you cannot control, just get past all of the crap and get down to business with Jesus. And, and either this is true or it's not. And if it's not true, if it's just semantics, I know it's not semantics, because we, we see what's happened in the life of Michael and so many others. It's not just semantics. It's not just theory. Get down to the real business of life with Jesus, because he's there for us at that authentic place. Heading number four, a process, or as we say in Canada, a process. And that process is restoration. God is in the process of redeeming and restoring the world. And one day, everything will be set right. Do you believe it? Amen. Everything. Yes. Everything will be set right. The Bible says that one day, the very elements of this creation will melt with a fervent heat. And a day is coming when God will usher in a new heaven and a new earth... And all of God's redeemed children will be there with him in that place, with our creator, the one who created us in his image. And that image will be restored. And that will be awesome. That will be tremendous. That will be awesome in the true meaning of the word. Don't don't use awesome for other things. God is awesome. And that restoration will be awesome. Whew. (laughs) Sorry, I'm... I'm going to go a minute or two past here. It's all right. God's time. But in the meantime, we deal with the complexities of life, don't we? 
we deal with the everyday temptations and challenges of a world that is still busted and crippled. And there are still incidents like Sandy Hook, child abuse, wars and rumors of wars and things that we don't call wars that are horrific. Suffering. And every day you and I are faced with a decision Will I return to my addictive behavior? Will I repeat those compulsive actions that control my life? And that scripture that Steve read at the beginning can help us here. And this is again is what it says. He says, a lot of people stand to inherit nothing of God's coming kingdom, including those whose lives are defined by sexual immorality, Idolatry, adultery, sexual deviancy, theft, greed, drunkenness, slander, and swindling. But verse 11 is the key verse. He says, some of you used to live in those ways. You were caught in those patterns. You had made decisions that were destroying your life. But he's speaking in the past tense. That's the way it was. But he says, you are different now. Jesus Christ has made a change in your life. You have been washed clean. That's what the blood of Jesus will do. You have been set apart. God has separated us from those who seek to follow a way of disobedience, and he has placed us in a new family. We have been restored to a living relationship with God. We've been set on the right path. Now that's good news. The past was the past. There was a reality to it, but we're in a different place now. So temptations will rise up to challenge us in this place between the cross and heaven. There are challenges, and we must cultivate our relationship with God. We must devote ourselves to Jesus Christ, get down deep, get down beyond merely good habits to the reality of God's love and grace. And by his grace, we will and we can break free of addictive behavior. And that's an amen. amen. In telling this story, Mike Mossberg said that he's been blessed to have tools to help him maintain his sobriety. One such tool is the 12-step program. And in your bulletin today, those 12 steps are listed along with a corresponding scripture verse. If you know you have an issue, or you think you might, or you think you don't, it would be worth half an hour reading those 12 steps and those scripture verses and reflecting on it. Maybe God will break something open that you haven't even realized or understood in your own life. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your presence with us. We thank you for the reality, the authenticity of your word meeting us at our broken places. And we thank you for the great story that Mike has to tell, the ongoing story. We know that all of us are works in progress, and we must walk with you. We must choose to walk with you one day at a time. We pray for your best for each one. Give us ears to hear your voice. We want to be available for you and your great redeeming, restoring work. In Jesus' name. Amen.